Welcome back everyone. If you could please like and subscribe, I would really appreciate it. So in today's video, I'm gonna give you my EDC or everyday carry when it comes to my lighting case. Six accessories that I have with me almost all the time that help me do my job a lot more efficiently. In fact, when I forget these items, like let's see, I'm doing a packing a new case specifically for a job, it oftentimes is really a drag. So the very first thing that I have with me or I'm gonna share with you today is this Swiss Army knife. It, this was actually a gift from Ellen Chrome. Um, but if you have any sort of multi-tool in your bag, it will come in really handy because you don't know when you're gonna need a knife or a screwdriver or a pair of scissors. Those things can be clutch on location because something might go wrong and you are most of the time going to be on your own. The second thing I wanna talk about is this two and a half inch grip head and a clamp that I'll show you in just a second. So the two and a half inch grip head is essentially like the Swiss Army knife for photographers, if you will. If it's not the Swiss Army knife, isn't the Swiss Army knife, but anyway. So um, this lets you, this can go on any light stand on this side, um, or I guess anything that has a 5.8 stud. Um, and then over here in these holes, you can put other objects. So what I'm gonna do most today, and what I do almost all the time, is I put one of these double-ended studs in here. And uh, it just goes in just like that. And then on this double-ended stud, I can put anything from a ball head to a light, but most of the time what I'm doing is I'm putting this clip on here. And with this combination, I have two of them in my lighting case at all times. I can hold a piece of foam core or a reflector or anything under the sun, basically in any position. I just stick it on top of a light stand and put whatever object I need to hold in here and I'm done. So I could use this for fill, for instance, if I wanna use a reflector to bounce a light back, um, I could use it for a flag if I wanna put something, let's say between light coming through a window and my subject, or maybe between my main light and my subject. It just comes in really handy all of the time. And that's why I keep two of them with me in the case. So if you enjoy learning from me in these videos, you probably would also enjoy learning from me on my members only website the Academy with John Gress. On the Academy, members will get access to longer format tutorials than what you'll find here on YouTube. They'll also get access to two live monthly Q&A and critique sessions, discounts on in-person workshops, and access to a members-only Facebook group. So for more information and to sign up for a three-day free trial, just go to johngress.com academy. The next thing that I wanna talk about is makeup. And this is my makeup bag that I keep in my case. They always, these containers always leak and so the bag always looks terrible. Um, but essentially, having makeup in your case in everyone's skin tone, I usually have um, five different shades of pressed powder or loose powder and then a clear one. Those six things together will pretty much help you uh, knock down the shine on anyone or even out their skin tone. It could be the first step in the retouching process. It's way better for you to correct these things in person than to try to do it in post. It saves an immense amount of time. And so a lot of the times, uh, specifically with male models, I will apply this on set, sometimes with my male commercial clients, like a realtor that I had a few weeks ago, um, usually female subjects, I can have them apply it, their own stuff. And that way I'm sort of speeding up my workflow on the back end and also making them look better. I also use these foam wedges, which are disposable. And the way that I will apply the makeup is that I will scrape it off into, onto a paper plate, and then I will use these wedges and apply it to the person. I'll use the paper plate under their chin to keep it off their clothing, and then I will throw it away. That way I'm not um, spreading someone's monkey pox from one person to another. Now, one thing that you do need to know when it comes to makeup is that in your jurisdiction, it may be unlawful for you to apply makeup to someone else. And if that's the case, you could have them apply it to themselves. But having this makeup is a great way to get a, the first foundation of, of retouching and it will help you reduce your time in Photoshop. And so it's worth every ounce. 
The next thing I want to talk about is gaffer tape. This is a small row a roll because I use it all the time and I, you know, started off it was probably it was probably this big when I started out, but I've used it so much. Um, you know, you can use gaffer tape to hold on gels. You can use gaffer tape to style clothing. If you can come up with a reason to use it, gaffer tape will probably uh, work, whatever the problem is that you're having. Similarly, and I always mess up with that word, um, A clamps are great too. So this is a two inch A clamp, and this is good for pinning back, let's say a jacket behind somebody because you want to make it look really tight and fitted on them. It might be good for holding a paper or painted backdrop tube in place on a background uh, stand. And you can get these in also one inch size. I've got a lot of those too in the studio and they're good for um, styling clothing as well. That's probably what I use most of the time, but these are really invaluable and something that I would suggest that everybody has in their kit. The last thing that I want to talk about is in this sealed bag because I've never had to open it and I'm really glad that I've never needed it. So you can fire your flash with a remote trigger. That's really helpful. But what would you do if the batteries ran out or just malfunctioned? You need to have a backup and that's where this comes in. Most professional cameras have a PC socket and that's what you would plug this into. And most lights have a three and a half inch or one sixteenth inch jack in there that you can plug into. And when you plug this 15 foot cable or five meter cable into your light and plug it into your camera, you should be able to fire your flash using regular old sync, not high speed sync or anything fancy. But I've had one of these in my case my entire career. And I think a couple of times I had to use it hasn't been recent, but I have had to use one of these when let's say I ran out of batteries on my trigger or I forgot it at home. So something like this could really save your life. Anyway, guys, I hope that all helped and will solve problems for you in the future. If you have any questions or comments, just leave those below. I would love to hear what things you have in your case that you would never leave home other than the lights. Um, anyway, Take care, have a great day, and I'll talk to you soon.